As soon as we knew that there was going to be a building, a new building commissioned, and that we knew where it was going to be on this site on Beach Park Avenue, um, a group of parents uh, started to get together to make an application for the Percent for Arts scheme. So a little group of parents got together and basically over a number of years they quite doggedly pursued the Department of Education to, at various stages during the commissioning of the building, to ensure that we could make an application and, um, well I suppose really it was because of that stubbornness and determination on the part of those few parents, well informed parents at the beginning, that we actually got the um, go ahead to commission a work of art under the Percent for Arts scheme. From very early on, the, a decision was made that a professional project manager would be part, uh, would be introduced and that we would get someone to manage the, the commissioning and to manage the whole selection process. And I really think that that influenced the department when they saw that we had that kind of expertise or the potential to access that kind of expertise and that we'd written that into budgets from the beginning, um, I think they were fairly convinced that it could go ahead. I think what worked for us was the fact that we had a lot of discussion and the discussion was led and directed by Rory because he would introduce the idea of a closed selection or a limited selection or an open competition and tell us what the pros and cons of one or the other would be and then he he instigated conversations around would we have it open to any art form would we were we interested in a completely temporary piece um could we did we want a permanent piece you know so he he kind of facilitated us to have a lot of of conversations that probably as a group we wouldn't have ha had in advance of looking at the applications and that meant that by the time we actually were inviting artists to submit work we had a fair idea of what the form would be and the temporary versus permanent you know we did want to have something that had permanence we weren't completely happy about something completely um, uh, at the that wouldn't where there wouldn't be a presence at the end of it because we did talk about could we commission a dance piece or a music piece or whatever um, so you know the fact that the uh, that I think it really helps to get as much of that out of the way before you're looking at 25 pieces of art and trying to compare things that are not comparable so we ended up with quite a clear idea um, of what we as a panel and as representatives of the various school aspects of the school community, we had a fairly clear idea of what we wanted. When we got the go-ahead, we then had to really um, establish the selection committee and that was probably the most um, complicated task and Rory O'Queeve was the project manager, or is the project manager, so he very ably steered us through that. But we ended up with, you know, we started with um, a selected, com a limited competition and a cir circulated a brief to a certain number of artists. But even that, had to, we had to go through a process where a panel of people met to agree that we would go down that route rather than open competition. And... Um, we ended up, I think we had a three-stage selection process um, because we, we got people to submit work, we then got them whittled that down, we had Rory also got uh, an, out, an artist to come onto the panel as well, um, very, very Claffy was the person that came onto the selection panel as well to give us a bit of support, um, apart from that it was Ruth, uh, the principal, the then principal and I think there were three or four parents involved at that stage. I think there were six artists shortlisted, ultimately, who um, we invited to submit work. And then I think we brought it down to three after that. And we, we actually paid artists to 
well, I'm sure everybody does this, but anyway, you know, we did have to pay the artists to put in the work to offer their work for selection. And, you know, um, we got, I think we got the artists to come in and maybe talk about their, talk about their piece as well at the final stage when we were finally um, coming down to that. So I think if you haven't got a lot of experience of using the scheme or of commissioning public art, then really I think you do need to have um, to buy in that expertise, whether it's from a project manager or from an artist who will help you with the process. Or whatever. There was some, there, there were occasional misunderstandings about what the Percent for Art scheme was and it was very much, because this school has been very effective in utilising artists in residence schemes and on a number of occasions I think there were, uh, teachers may have been a little bit uncomfortable about the fact that there was an artist on the school grounds who was making a piece of work but he wasn't talking in classrooms to children about making artistic work and he wasn't doing projects with them in their classrooms to do with making artistic work. They saw him working and they saw him up on the cherry picker taking the photographs and they saw him at various stages and they would have had, you know, different children would probably have had conversations with him etc etc but his function wasn't to instruct them or to get project work out of the children and I think there was there were a few um, misunderstandings about the fact that the percent for art is about the purchase of a piece of work and that you couldn't you might some of the other proposals we had wouldn't have involved uh, the kids ever seeing the artist but we were quite keen on the fact that he would be seen working in the school and that they would see oh that's an artist and he's there with his overalls on and you know he's got paint in his hair and that that would be something that children here would see that's what an artist looks like just like somebody else you know